Everybody, we are on to the final match of the day, and I'm not going to run an ad. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed, who has supported Commander Rad and Dramamine. Both of you are freaking amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the reveal. That was a good transition. Well, everybody, I think we have had enough of kindness. Actually, you know what? I usually think these games that uh, this GM gives out tend to be a lot of joy. You know, some of them are a lot more bizarre than necessarily bad. Will we get that today, or will we get something that is a huge pain? Please welcome on in our GM, Tristan. I'm sorry, I cut off your lips there, Tristan. Uh, what? Your, your <laughs> egg lips. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for the for the lip severing, but uh, other than that, you know, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. So I I'm here. You know, Blasphemous Roar gave you the business for not knowing about uh, you know uh, music. Uh, I'm here to regale you and be a little surprised at your lack of knowledge of the great um, Edward Keel. I'm sorry, everybody. Guess what? Sometimes you just don't know crap. <laughs> That's all right. I'm trolling a little bit. Fine. Troll a yeah, my name is Jason, and I'm going to come and troll your Twitch.tv channel because I got a game to give out. <laughs> all right. Um, Edward Keel was the guy responsible for the troll a little song, and, and that's it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's a good guy. But I yeah. I forgot his name. Fair enough. Anyway, as for the game, um, so I I planned all this stuff out last night. I had like seven games lined up and I had all my info put together and I woke up this morning and as I want to do, I just went, you know what? All those games I, I planned out, nah, I, I want to do something a little different. So I gave people Korean bootleg Robocop. <laughs> Oh, always a good thing to give out to people. Yeah, if people have seen this, they know what kind of pain is coming up. Because this is not your average Robocop. This is Korean bootleg Robocop. Uh, honestly, Tristan, the good thing about having... What am I thinking? Come on, words, words, are you here? Words, words. The good thing about planning early is that you still have those plans later on if you want to give those games out. So no big deal. Oh, absolutely. And this happens far more often than I want to admit, where the night before I GM a Cusa Grande match, I do all of this stuff to get my, my arsenal in order. Uh, because after GMing the match in the Cusa Grande Invitational of, I think it was Smite versus Proton John, yeah. I bumped my list of games available for any given GM session up to about 10. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then I just wake up and go, you know what? There's an 11th game I didn't think about that I really want to just watch people play, and then I give it out. I love that tradition. It's a good one. Uh, we have seen this game before, everybody, so do not be surprised if people in chat are discussing it a little bit. Uh, I love this game. It's really I'm, good. I'm not sure if I love it unironically. But it's I love something. laughing at this game. I don't love it for being a game. I love it for existing. And maybe that's even a higher praise, you know? Good job for being here. Good job for being a real experience that players have to go through. Thank you, so, thank you, thank you, video games. I have to up the ante on this a little bit, because when I when it was given out in Kuso 4, I believe we... Were we still using BizHawk back then? I don't remember. Uh, I'm but, not sure. Uh, we were definitely using a different version of RetroArch if we were still using RA. Uh, this one has a bug. <laughs> uh, uh oh. Um, and I believe all four of our racers have hit it where if you soft reset the emulator, it just goes to full on, um, like, <laughs> very shrill dial up modem tone, and you can't stop it unless you restart RetroArch. <laughs> Well, everybody, I hope you like modems because we might <laughs> hear them today. Thank you, I Tristan. Told them, I told them that if they're in a situation where they need to just reset, you know, especially the person doing audio needs to reset, I'm not going to force them to like juggle weird things to, to fix the audio during a race. 
So, you know. <laughs> well, luckily I hear no audio yet. Yeah, we got a big mic on audio. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, big Mike giving us the audio. We've got big Mike capitalist one one one, Logstar Go and Dragon Lord Carter going through. How do you say the first word? Gonchel Robo. Gonchel Robocop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't too bad. I think it's Gongchol, but um, it's yeah, it's in that area. <laughs> And for some reason, somehow I've fallen into this, like, parallel universe, this strange singularity, where I opened everyone's stream separately from your stream, mm -hmm. and somehow your stream is ahead of the individual streams. I don't know how. I'm... Do you believe in magic? And I think you do. You know who's saying that? Ronald McDonald. Huh? Now I who's think you're a time traveler. <laughs> yeah. Going through time. Uh, I, I did ask Big Mike to check audio if able. Okay, that. And I was doing a final check just to make sure everybody's streams are in the right place. I fully expect people to correct me if that ever is not the case. But I'm pretty good at this. That's the one thing that I do fairly reliably. Okay, I think Big Mike, right when I asked if he could do an audio check, ran away. Which is an apt response to this game. Logstar has been trying to convince Big Mike, since Big Mike is the one doing audio, to deliberately trigger the reset glitch. And <laughs> I haven't said he can't. <laughs> I'm fine with it. If they want to destroy our ears, that is the purpose of this channel. Destroy ears, destroy hope, destroy everything. Except for Neetzel, thank you for the subscription. <laughs> purpose of the channel is to destroy hope and monetize Neetzel. Monetize <laughs> Neetzel, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I'm checking right now with the players to see if they are ready because this is amazing and I get to hear the run out cord there. I think Big Mike is closing the emulator and opening it back up for the point of being a kind individual. Okay. I did give them a way to work around the audio glitch. Uh, whether or not they do it is their choice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. Best of luck to the players, everybody in chat. This is your time to spam emotes. Okay, so we need Robocops, and we need guns, and we need... What else? That's death. Pretty pretty Lots of death. Yeah, a lot of death. Yeah. As soon as I see movement in the first stage, I will start our timer. Yeah, there we go. There's Robocop. I like that guy. So there's a name input. It does absolutely nothing. Um, one thing I did tell them, and the only thing I told them, was that the bullets on the left side of the screen when you first start the game are the only way you can get ammo, because the only way to get additional ammo is to shoot boxes. Oh, yeah, so, so you have to get ammo at the very beginning. Yeah, if you don't get that first ammo, you're hosed. Um, and I wasn't going to tell them that, except uh, one of our racers kind of waffled a little bit on selection and when I don't know if I remember this or not but if I do remember it all I remember is like it's really ugly I'm like all right fine what I'm gonna do is give out the one oh by the way uh, Logstar has picked up the speed power up oh yeah that's how you die <laughs> that's how you die you don't want that <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, speed power up is although it looks cool it's probably TAS only yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> yeah, uh, simply put, humans cannot control the Robocop when he has those hydraulics uh, pumping, you know? Yeah. How, do, how, 
of you imagine Robocop is powered? Like, what, does he use hydraulics, or is it all just, like, electric motors, or... I just imagined it's all still, um... It's all still just, like, biomolecular, and it's just he has armor plating over the top of his flesh. But I oh, don't does know. that mean he needs to eat more? Like, in order to power any of the armor while walking around? Like, because that's really heavy armor. So I'm pretty sure this is answered in one of the Robocop movies, and I don't know because I've never seen a Robocop movie. Doesn't he baby food? Oh my gosh. Okay, let me just say that I was all for becoming a cyborg until somebody suggested I might have to eat baby food for the rest of my life. I hate that. <laughs> okay, never mind. Being a Robocop is not worth it. So this is a bootleg, uh, in, in spirit anyway, of like the NES Robocop 2, except you don't have Nuke. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and somehow this is less controllable than the NES RoboCop 2, and that's I believe impressive. We had the NES RoboCop 2 in Cusa Grande, and this is a bootleg of a game that was already in Cusa Grande. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, there's no hostages or drug dealers or anything like that. It's just straight get to the end of the stage, which is why I felt comfortable giving our racers today absolutely no guidance or hints or anything. Just I, mm -hmm. I just said, here you go, have fun. Uh, it, it's a pretty basic run-and-shoot platformer, except if you pick up the speed power-up, you die a horrific death. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Whoever goes the farthest to the right has made the most progress. There we go. Yeah, uh, that's the... That's the kind of game that I can track pretty okay, sometimes. Not necessarily yeah. when there are four people and some of them are picking up speed boosts, like the Big Mike. The Big Mike actually made a lot of progress with the speed boost and promptly died. I thought he was gonna get through without dying. But you that... never get through without dying. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen anybody get through without dying with those boosts. I would be the type of player, though, who keeps trying because I just want to. I love being out of control when I'm playing my video games, you know? You gotta go fast. Yeah. So when this got given out in Kuso 4, um, the general flow of it was for about 30 minutes, no one could get past the first stage, and then all four racers at the same time just went on a tear and got halfway through the game. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty strong. Um, Andy was in that race, and Andy just kind of murdered the competition. So everyone did really well in that. So I'm kind of thinking we're going to see similar here, where there's some struggling in the beginning because this game is butts. And then we're just going to see a breakout, and people are going to start, you know, making good mm -hmm. progress. I love that the enemies in the windows occasionally look like they're from... Dark Man, which, by the way, was based off of the RoboCop 2 NES thing, engine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I understand, the pedigree of this game is you have the RoboCop 2 for the NES. That got recreated by Korean bootleggers on the MSX, and then that game got ported to the Master System because of similar processor architecture. <laughs> Wait, this was on MSX? That's what someone was saying. Oh! A lot of MSX games got ported to the Master System and vice versa. Because the port job was pretty easy. I could see it, and you know, if you're making a bootleg Robocop, might as well get it up on as many platforms as you can, you know? I mean, if there's anything we've learned is that there is a lot of Robocop out there. Big Mike is doing it with the uh, speed upgrade. What I will say about this, though, is that most of the graphics actually seem pretty unique. The The physics definitely weren't ripped off uh, completely. The, the level design is definitely different. The music is different. Like, there, there are a lot of unique aspects. It wasn't just copy everything and 
uh, put it on a different system. So they, they actually got some good stuff on this. Yeah. And I'd say that, you know, uh, you can make any game look good or sound good if you're just stealing. I like this music. And they you did, like this and, music. As far as I can tell, they didn't steal this music. This is an attempt... It, it's the NES Robocop 2 music, or maybe it's the Robocop 1 music. Uh, the problem is it's on a completely different SPU. Can't really just port it over. So they clean roomed it and it sounds different, but it's definitely the same music as far as I can tell. There's no way it's the same music. Someone is saying it's the keyboard riff from Genesis Abacab. I don't know what that is. But if oh. so, well, okay. Oh, there you go. Copyright laws were a little bit weird in the 90s, especially when dealing with international copyright. They're a lot more standard these days, so even if this is a bootleg, it probably was made per the local laws over there in South... Uh, over in South Korea, yeah. I want to say I looked into this last time Gung Cho Robocop was on, and the conclusion was copyright law in Korea just didn't exist at that time. Yeah. In any way that would have prevented this. I wouldn't be too surprised. I'm not uncultured. Oh my gosh, I'm going to kick people's butts if they keep saying that. <laughs> But, no, I'm not going to kick anybody's butt. I don't even know where they live. How can I kick your butt if I don't know where you live? Um, that is a good question. <laughs> I mean, you, you had an opportunity at uh, the last in-person AGDQ, but you didn't... Oh didn't my gosh! Me, the next AGDQ in person, someone's going to get a butt kicking. I mean, that happened to me at the last in-person AGDQ, and it's, it's nothing new. Ah, uh, well, I love this game. Okay, I, I think that, yeah, the, the game over music in this game is definitely taken from another game. The in-stage music, I don't know. Oh, Dragon Lord got squished. I love it. Yeah, that happens. Okay, I don't like this music as much. The, the big mic runs straight into the pit. Yep, welcome to the first boss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's like an ED-107 or whatever the heck it is. Do you have to do the whole level again? Yes. Okay. Whatever. If, if everybody has to do the level again, then everybody does the level again. I know that it could be a little bit frustrating to make progress and immediately die only to have to go and do everything again, but... Too bad, that's just life. This is life. Having seen, having seen 17 frames of a boss, Big Mike is in the league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, what scores do these players have? What are we looking at in terms of elimination? I have no idea. I <laughs> That doesn't influence honest, you I, at all. I try not to keep track of that stuff. I'm just, I just want to vibe with bad games. Okay, yeah, I see Big Mike has 12 points. I believe everybody else is about in that range. So we can look to two people surviving this round and two people are out. Yeah, two people are going home because of bootleg Robocop, Gong Chelk Robocop, which honestly, if I were to be eliminated, this would be a good way to go. You know, maybe have this, ooh, 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 you know, my, the day of my execution. I'd be like, go ahead, go ahead, Phil, flip that switch, but let me play some Korean Robocop while I go. Yeah, that would, that would be fine. That'd be good. That's definitely a decision. Uh. <laughs> like, no, you have to play games from the country. Sorry, we're not going to honor your request to play a bootleg. Bootleg Robocop at that. <laughs> These plungers, or whatever the heck you want to call them, are... Definitely one of the major threats in this first stage. 
Oh yeah. Like in in Ness Robocop 2, as long as you're moving at full speed, you can get under them, but several of these here, you can't do that. They'll catch you anyway, because the platform you have to run on is close enough to the the piston. You, yeah, just, you either have to have lightning or, or the speed power up or jump over them. So what do the vials do uh, that you they pick give, up in the level? They give you um, life indicator things up at the top, and when you have enough of them, you get an additional hit point. Oh, okay. It's jank. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently getting squished just kills you instantly, which happens to, to a lot of people. Don't get squished, I mean, if everybody. If anybody tries to sit on you, no, punch them. They're not allowed to sit I mean, on you. I mean, I've yet to see someone or something go on the Hydraulic Press channel and come out, like, unsquished, so... I've seen a few things survive, actually. I think... Oh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was one of the giant glass orbs that, uh... They tried to squish and make explode, and it just wouldn't go. It was terrifying. So Carter saw more frames of the first boss than Big Mike. <laughs> Probably even got a couple of shots off. The Nokia survived. Uh, that's that's got to be a, a meme I put on. <laughs> but no, I, I remember at least one thing that survived. And, like, you can feel the tension as they, like, raise the pressure a little bit more and nothing happens. You just hear a little bit more of the hydraulic press and you're like, oh. They, they know that if it goes right now, it's going to just destroy everything. I wouldn't want to be in that room. I get really scared when I know there's going to be a loud noise, but I don't know when it's going to happen. Uh... I'm like a dog in that sense, you know? I can understand that. The anxiety of a thing is going to happen, and I don't know I, when. I hate it. I hate it so much. One of my... Yeah, uh, I, I'm trying to think. There was one time that uh, our high school chem teacher, for some reason, thought that it was a good idea to uh, make a... What are they called? Like little cold ice bomb and put it in the the sink in the room and essentially we just had to hold our hands over our ears to protect our eardrums until it exploded and you never knew when it was gonna go dry ice true. bomb dry ice bomb yeah uh, I... <laughs> and i'm not a fan you know there might be some reasons why i have some hearing loss and I could possibly blame the public education system on part of that. I can blame the public education system on a lot of... <laughs> so we got a good suggestion from chat here. Um, Robocop Bizhawk Shuffler. I mean, that would be completely doable. Mm-hmm. So as far as explosions, uh, we didn't get to blow anything up in my chemistry class, but just the same. Um, oh, by the way, Big Mike is taking down the boss. Oh, he'd also blow up hydrogen balloons all the time. Yeah, Big Mike is in the lead, moving on to the second stage, which is yeah. uglier. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we didn't blow anything up on purpose in my high school chemistry class. Uh, what we ended up doing, though, is we had the class in a portable building that had a, an attached uh, air conditioning unit to it. And we're just having class one day, and we just out of nowhere, no warning or anything, hear this loud bang and black smoke starts pouring in through the AC vents. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I seem to recall oh, it smelled no. vaguely like burnt waffles. I do know that there was a chemistry teacher at my high school who blew himself up and had to go to the hospital. Oh, well, that's not good. Well, like, no super serious injuries, but still enough that he had to get a checkup. Oh, so I was reading the news recently, and I was reading a story about how just before July 4th, um, some local um, police seized a bunch of illegal fireworks and decided to call the bomb squad out to detonate them in a controlled manner. Um, and the bomb squad rolled out and just eyeballed how much explosive was in the fireworks, threw it into a controlled um, detonation vehicle and set it off. <gasps> and they were wrong by a factor of 10. Oh no! That's a um, big factor. And it blew the truck up and, like, damaged every house on the block. <gasps> oh, no. 
Uh, so in case you're ever wondering, the LAPD are a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I mean, that's not surprising at all to me either. Locally, like, I, I knew this kid who was the son of a police officer, and he'd brag about how, you know, they'd go and take all of the illegal fireworks, and then because they had to be, like, they had to be dealt with, they would go and light them off themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially, it was legal stealing of fireworks in order to put on their own fireworks show. Yeah, everyone's heard the news story. The The funny thing is, is uh, the local news rags uh, ran copy on that story that was just basically um, in the course of seizing so many pounds of fireworks and explosion rock the neighborhood. And it's like, you're burying the lead here, you twisted, corrupt media. <laughs> That's pretty good. The cops blew up the neighborhood. There you go. There's the yeah. lead. Yeah. So I guess Big Mike saw stage two and then engaged the game over button and is now fighting the boss of does stage this, one again. Does this fast movement ever end? Yeah, when you die. And also eventually. Oh. <laughs> is it called high time? I'm pretty sure it's high time at the top. Yeah, that's the uh, speed upgrade yeah. timer. It's time to say that you say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi, I'm Robocop. I'm dead. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robocop. I got high on nuke and back flipped into a pit. It's, In it's hello type of high. It's not the drug type of high. What are you talking about? <laughs> As a clarification, we do not condone illegal activity like fireworks. I absolutely do, but I don't represent Cusa Grande. Okay, I don't condone fireworks because that is like an incredibly antisocial thing to do. And I guarantee you, if you're setting off fireworks, someone in earshot either has an anxious dog or PTSD and don't heck and do it, you jerk. Or is trying to sleep. I condone a whole lot of other kinds of illegal activity. I'm just, I don't speak for Cusa Grande. Okay, yeah, thank you for not speaking for Cusa Grande. Uh, yeah, yeah, well... Depending on the specific activity, I might be more lenient, but we'll go ahead and say that for the sake of everybody listening, uh, as well as the jury that may be listening in, okay. no, we do not support it. Chat saying, I can't believe fireworks are still legal in California. They're not. Nowhere in California is it legal to set off fireworks uh, unless you are, like, paid by the city to do a fireworks show. <laughs> Also, yeah, feel free to say hi to the jury chat. They'll appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find Robo out in, here before. Yeah, like in the distant years, future, yeah. you know, if they like you. No, no, do not give voting suggestions for the, the result of the case. We don't even know what the case is. Oh my gosh, Chad is gonna get me in so much trouble. It is every American's duty, you know, specifically talking to the Americans here, to research the concept of jury nullification and use it liberally if you are on jury duty. And yeah, that's all you hear this jury? Actually, What's that? you can just, you can just make for a hung jury. Huh, jury? You ever think about that? <laughs> As chat says, do not follow any of the advice that has been given both here and in chat. Yeah, uh, do not follow any of this advice because it is not advice. It's actually just us BSing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Do not take legal advice from this the jolty on furry on the internet doing a bad games race i mean it's not even advice it's like it's it's bad anyways anyways let's move back to the game and do not do anything that has been mentioned in this chat including playing korean robocop 
You should absolutely play Korean Robocop. This I no. strongly recommend. No, no, look at it. Look at Big Mike. Big Mike can't control the game anymore. That's fine. He's dead. You say it's fine. He's literally dead. That's fine. Wow. Hey, Lockstar, go on to stage two as well. Very nice. If you didn't want collateral damage, why do you have me on the GM panel? Yeah, good point. <laughs> all right, all right. I guess do play Korean Robocop. Oh, yeah. Fireworks don't bother me quite as much as other things. Like, if I'm sitting in my house, fireworks are usually okay, but lightning is the loud noise that really I don't like. I spent the first 20 years of my life in Florida, and I miss thunderstorms severely. I don't miss the impacts of them, but I, I miss thunderstorms quite a bit. Like... Because I, I live somewhere now that doesn't have weather. <laughs> If it's a little bit distant, then I can really enjoy them, but geez, they're like, I swear, a, when I was a kid, there was this lightning strike that happened right outside my window, and I went into my room specifically to close the window when it happened. And yeah, it was loud. It was very, very, very loud. And uh, I, I believe that it hit the tree outside of our house, it's hard to know exactly what happened, but considering the vast amounts of bark that were on the ground afterwards, like, I feel that it got hit. Sounds like it. I mean, yeah. look, lightning is a friend. If it's knocking on your window, you should let it in. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, lightning that is super close is super scary, and like, being right next to a lightning strike with the window open, <sighs> yeah. yeah, it is a little scary. Uh, Big Mike I'm, has stage one scared. pretty much on lock at this point, rather a able to get consistently to level two. Uh, level two, the bubble wrap stage, I guess, uh, is a little, uh, little difficult, to say the least. Or how about being on the top of a mountain peak, the highest mountain in Utah, surrounded by a lightning storm, huh? How about that one? Because I've had that too. That is scary. Uh, yeah. Being the tallest object around during a lightning storm is horrifying. I've we been there. hid in an alcove in the side of the mountain, you know, to try to, you know, be a little bit safe. And there was a plaque dedicated to a guy who literally had been killed by lightning right at that exact spot. And I'm like, this is not a very good hideout. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, anyways, yeah, I think players are starting to get the hang of this and realize, you know, while you mentally want to go fast just because of the pressure of a video game tournament, going a little bit slower in most cases is probably the best idea. Definitely not picking up the speed upgrade is a good idea. Yeah, yeah you speed want to upgrade is ridiculous. Speed upgrade is boss room. Why? Well, they got the speed upgrade right before the boss and killed the boss. What? Pretty impressive. Logstar Go is a quality player, though, so I'm not too surprised. But still, like being able to use the speed up and not die immediately is shocking. It's just, that's not how this game was made. This game was made <laughs> to be impossible, I, I feel. Oh, Logstar goes straight into the pit because guess what? Platforming while you are on high time is a bad idea. Yeah. Platforming in general is difficult in this because the game tends to want to keep you moving forward for an additional step when you let go of the D-pad. Okay. Except it's not consistent. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. It seems like this game has weird acceleration as well with the platforming. The way I would put it is that sometimes this game gets confused and thinks it's a node-based platformer. But only sometimes. A node-based platformer? Yeah, like Prince of Persia. Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. Like, it seems like if you hold over, uh, you 
need to hold over for a little while in order to get enough speed to make it over platforms. Otherwise, if you try to jump from a standstill, it's not going to work. You're going to go in the pit right next to you. Yeah, also, especially on level two, good luck telling what you can stand on and what you can't. Yeah! Yeah! Video games, everybody. Yeah, it looks like Logstar Go has an invincibility or something. I assume that the flashing is invincibility. Yes. Like, when Robocop turns into Axe Battler, Legend of Golden Axe, then, yeah, Look, essentially you're invincible. Look, I've never given out a game with flashing that bad. You can't give me crap for this anymore. Uh, yeah, I can't! I can't! All the crap goes to Blasphemous Roar now! It's a good place for it to land. <laughs> All the heck. Ah, oh, well, I hope everybody is doing well. This has been a fantastic weekend. We've got half an hour more of this game. Don't forget, uh, we have streams on Tuesday nights. It looks like we're probably not going to be having Don't Make Us Bored, but I 100% plan on streaming by myself. Why don't we have it? Corndan has an obligation. So we're going to take the week off. Uh, but feel free to submit if you want to play a game over there. Exclamation point DMUB is where you can send it. Uh, because Corndan has things going on, I will either do Robocop... Not Robocop. No, no. Scratch that. Okay, you said it. No, you're, you're no, 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 no. Lies, lies. Uh, probably some Road Rash. And I want to do a viewer choice or two uh, as long as I am feeling good for that. So that is the current plan for Tuesday. And because streaming is now my only job, I definitely have to stick to commitments more. But I let people know on Twitter and Discord when I go live. So don't worry, Well, uh, if you are over on one of those two things, you should get a notice. Robocop oh, yeah, games for sub choices? Um... No! No! I don't want to play Robocop! I've played too much <laughs> Robocop in my life. It'll be too easy. I don't know about that. Like, I this just... isn't just Robocop. This is bootleg Robocop. Okay. Like, Trisden. Here's the deal. Saying that you don't want to play Robocop is not going to help. Saying that it's going to be too easy will... If that's the one thing that could dissuade this audience. You know it. I just take that as a challenge. I will See, find a Robocop that's That's why I'm not letting you choose on Tuesday. Hmm. That's probably a wise decision. <laughs> oh, jeez. The Big Mike is doing some tricky platforming. With only one hit point left. I like it. How many lives do you have in this game, by the way? That is the... App indicator at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, cap. So you have four <laughs> and there's no zero. Okay. Cap. Yeah. I, I think that was supposed to say cop, but... Uh... <laughs> Or, or like capping? the cap for the lives that you have? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about this, this game. This is still I'm... not the worst translation we've had this weekend. Let me just say. I don't like, think anything can be worse than that Flintstones game. That also wasn't the worst translation we had. Wait, that Flintstones? Wasn't even a translation. That was just someone making Wilma spew vulgarity. No, not. Oh, oh, that one. That one was beautiful. No, the the worst translation we had this weekend was definitely the beast wrestling. That was good. That was not good translation. But it was good wrestling. Bet they got really sweaty wrestling. Except lizards don't really sweat, do they? Like, no. they, they, yeah, they're cold-blooded. There's no reason for them to sweat. Why would they? Yeah, so I never really explained the interface, the HUD. <laughs> um, the, okay. Probably the most pertinent thing is the BM counter, which is obviously your bullets. Uh, high time is how long your speed lasts. 
when you have speed. Life U is um, iterated every time you pick up a, a, a vial, a, you know, a, a bottle. And when that fills up, you get an extra cap. Cap is your lives. Life at the bottom is your life within the current life that you're doing. It's hit points. And I don't know what area is. I, I've only ever seen it one, so whatever. Mm. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is... Why does it say Life U? Life upgrade or something? I don't oh, know. Maybe. That that actually would make sense. Dang it. Why does it make sense? I don't want my Robocop games to make sense. I want them to be... bootleggy and weird. Oh, okay. Cap stands for capitalism, and the goal of the game is to reduce it to zero. Um, I would play that game, but I don't think it's the case here. No, when it says game over, that means you did it. Good oh, okay. job. When it means the game is over. <laughs> Wait, is there a RoboCop pinball? That could actually be fun. So you're I playing would've... RoboCop pinball this Tuesday? <laughs> I like pinball. As long as it doesn't have, like, really crappy music, then sure. Sure, I'll play RoboCop. I have pinball. a pinball game in my arsenal, but I don't I don't think it would last an hour. I gotta figure something out about that. I love me a good pinball. I love me an adequate pinball. Do you love you a bad pinball? <sighs> no, not really. Is it your dream to become a pinball? No. <laughs> what the crap? Why would you even ask that? I mean, You're I... gonna be become a ball. You wanna be a okay. ball. I, don't I, want to be I know of two situations where I have seen one, a child expressed that it was his dream to become a baseball, and two, a child expressed that it was his dream to become a blitzball. Okay, I know the blitzball one. Why would... <laughs> but that was a translation error, okay? Worse than a Korean Robocop. Final Fantasy X. You heard it here, folks. You heard it. Final Fantasy X is a good movie with some choices in it in the middle. I actually really enjoy the movie, or the, the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing through it right now for the first time ever. I think that it probably hasn't aged that well, but I still really enjoyed it when it came out. Waka has not aged that well, that's about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. But he's still amazing. I love Waka. Uh-huh. <laughs> And also, people with different accents are totally allowed to exist in video games. There. Totally. I mean, that's fine. It, uh, the problem with Waka is a little bit deeper than that. <laughs> okay, okay. We can talk about that on another stream. Rosentia plays Robocop Pinball. <laughs> Look, part of discussing games, especially from the view of how they're bad, is critiquing their social, oh. social messaging. You're just yeah, lucky I, I dropped short no, of putting I, I a problematic agree. game on here. <laughs> I completely agree, and uh, it's worth being critical of things that we like. I forgot about the racism in Final Fantasy X. <laughs> but I played that when I was young. <laughs> yeah, that, that goes over <laughs> one's head when they're young, probably, but playing it now is just like, ouch, man. Young in Utah. Get sent back to stage one again. Uh... We've got some solid action in stage two. We got 25 minutes left. I'm totally expecting we're gonna see more. So I'm not sweating figuring out who's winning yet, which is kind of bad because Cadis had to step away for a couple of minutes. It's all good. Like, honestly, I would be surprised if we don't see the second boss at some point. I'm expecting we will. Ah, yeah. We got a long drawn out me. Oh, Cadis is back! Yay! We can re we can go back to whatever crap we were doing before. Uh, when do we ever do anything else? Yeah, I, to be I, fair. I can't recall the last time I GM something where the commentary didn't just go completely in the toilet That's, somehow. It's my job! It's my job! Uh, my job is to encourage everyone to embrace that weird corner of their brain that they try to acknowledge doesn't exist. Which part? Uh, for some people, there's more than one, and that's also okay. Also, do brains have corners? Look. 
I heard the best insult the other day, and it came from, like, someone in New Zealand Parliament or something. And it was, um... Uh, during part of the parliamentary procedure, someone made the motion to recognize that one of the other, um, parliament members had a brain so small it could spin around in a nutshell for a thousand years and never touch the side. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, he one. got slapped with a, a motion to acknowledge his violation of parliamentary procedure for this. Uh, yeah, it's probably, like, here's the deal. That is an amazing insult, and you should definitely be slapped with that. And then it still becomes your legacy. That Look, you had, I... like, the sickest burn. Even I, who is typically a pretty sincere, uh, direct person who believes in just communicating clearly and openly without irony or sarcasm most of the time, has to bow down and appreciate the art of the sick burn. Yeah, I I like the sick burn. Oh man, you're talking to the wrong person. I love sarcasm. Like in real life, I love sarcasm. I use sarcasm all the time. Uh, I just I tend to believe that you have to be very careful in when you deploy it and make sure that it's understood what your true communication is. Yeah, or use it in a point where if it's not understood, that is completely fine. Yeah. Uh, anyway, as far as um, yeah. Kate is asking about notable progress, we've got we've seen stage two on um, Logstar and Mike's screens. Who got further? I couldn't tell you. Uh, I'm expecting to see more progress though, so I haven't sweated it all that much. <laughs> I like it. It's good sound. That soft reset is not as bad as you made it se sound like it was going to be. It's been a little bit less awful than uh, I've managed to get it. Okay, well, hopefully we have a cursed reset sometime before the end of the stream. <laughs> but yeah, I honestly, I would probably be resetting like Big Mike has been. Uh, this far into the match, you know, dying on the first stage... <laughs> It's not really worth continuing your run in some cases, just because you go back to the very beginning, there's nothing that you've gained, there's only what you've lost. Uh, and it's really not worth doing that the first several times, because, you know, you are going to die a lot. Uh, and it's a little bit faster to get back into the game without doing the reset. But at this point, if you're wanting to get a good push, it's something to consider. Of course, the downside is that if you keep doing that, you might eventually just run out of time to make a good push. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, I tend to shy away from games that do full game overs. I, I don't like how they feel in a match most of the time. Uh, unless they're extremely short games. Like, we're talking like five-minute game over cycles or something like this one. But I definitely recognize it brings a different dimension of strategy in trying to decide when to give up on an attempt and reset. Because if you play that game wisely, you have an entire extra 15 to 20 minutes to try to make progress over a racer who just goes until they game over, over and over again. Yep. Uh, one of the mo most notorious games for that is Golgo 13. Uh, oh god. Yeah, so, because you get a game over once you have died 52 times. Uh, after 52 deaths, it's game over. It doesn't even warn you when that is coming up as well, so it just comes as a total surprise that you can no longer play. Yeah, and I personally, I've said this before in prior matches when I've been commentating, one of the scariest failure states for me as a GM is to have someone's first game over occur at the 45 minute plus mark and that make the match. I'm, I'm terrified of that happening. I would feel like crap. <laughs> oh, I've had it happen, Tristan. It's happened a couple of times. I just, I feel that uh, that is something I personally want to avoid when giving a game out. Actually, yeah, if it is in the manual, uh, then that's something 
for the players to keep in mind. Uh, there, there's something that I want to put together sometime that is a, essentially a guide for how to practice, what things to think about when you're playing matches, uh, what to look for when you're doing a little preparation. Like if, if you get a manual, you know, what kind of information you should probably be uh, uh, trying to get out of it. Because I, I do think that some good players are able to uh, make use of the information that they give or that they get out of the preparation. And there are sometimes things that, you know, are stated somewhere, but uh, because somebody didn't quite pay attention or notice it, uh, you know, the, the match can be decided for missing that piece of knowledge. It, it, it would be kind of fun. I, I would like to put together like some information for how to practice for a mystery style tournament without ever having played the game that you're going to be going and playing. Something that I learned in my <laughs> Dota days, which, oh God, Pokemon Unite being out is giving me such horrible pulls back into my old, um, like, what's, what, what is the bully in the, the taxonomy of uh, game player types? Is that the, um, the club type? But the, anyway, the, the I digress. Something I learned in my MOBA days was that eventually you learn enough about doing something that you just develop this sixth sense for what's going on. And I feel that's that way with mystery tournament games and even Kusoge is you eventually just get this grasp of, for example, you've played enough Sashin games that you've gotten really good at triangle jumps. Um, okay. You have played enough um, really weird Korean bootlegs that you've gotten a sense for, well, this is going to have a bunch of really awful uh, insta-kill, yeah. surprise jerk mechanics in it, like the pistons and the death pits and the speed upgrades. And you start to put this stuff together and you're able to draw parallels where you see, well, Gung Chol Robocop has this really awful Sega Master System look and feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's a Korean game. What can I expect? Uh, and I think just you get a feel for how games are going to go based on how they feel when you start them off. Yeah. It's interesting that Big Mike actually can just speed through the first level with almost no problem now, even with the speed upgrade. It's just impressive. I've never seen anybody get this used to the speed upgrade. Usually, you know, uh, it, it's something that uh, if I stumbled across the speed upgrade and collected it and immediately died after trying it once or twice, I would have just given up on it. I would not be using it, but Big Mike actually can use it and get through. Uh, that's surprising to me. I, I don't recommend that for most people. Not recommended. My advice would be don't do that. But hey, Big Mike is luckily uh, not listening to me. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, the the best advice that you can give for the majority of situations isn't for every player. There are different play styles here, and the the risky play style that Big Mike is doing in this is definitely working for him. There's definitely different. What happened to Capitalist? <laughs> Okay, there we go. There's definitely different approaches that one can take when approaching doing a game completely sight on scene in a race environment. One of the things I did was I would try to get a feel for how I was doing, and if I was just completely behind at the 55 minute mark, try to find a zip. <laughs> Capitalist crashed the game. Amazing. I've never <laughs> seen that happen before. I don't feel too bad about it because um, it, this game is... <laughs> Port. Well, everybody, you get all the information about Capitalist right there, just in case you need you need it. <laughs> uh, and also, welcome to bootlegs. You never really know what's going to happen when you get a bootleg. Bootlegs have always been a part of Cusa Grande, by the way. The first tournament that we had, all of the losers bracket was bootlegs, uh, for better or for worse. And I love bootlegs. I love. Oh, so do I. I love the idea of <laughs> someone just going, well, we can't have the original, so we're just going to make our own, and just... 
I find it interesting from a development standpoint that they always seem to be of inferior quality because there was some serious gatekeeping in doing console development in this era. But not on the Master System, really. Then again, I'm thinking about games that were licensed on the NES, and some of them were pretty off too. So maybe I'm talking out of my... You know what? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, what I find fascinating about uh, bootleg games is that oftentimes they don't follow all of the rules that are fairly standard when it comes to normal video games. Are there some pixel-perfect jumps in normal video games? Yes! Are there, like, ten in a row? Based? No. Not in real video games, but in bootlegs, there may be. Just casually release a game that has a jump that can't be made because the platform you need to jump on gets despawned due to sprite limitations because the map layout is awful. That's so what I was cool. thinking as well. <laughs> Do platforms despawn for regular for, for people playing a game because they killed too many enemies? No! In a bootleg? Oh, it could happen, and in fact mm -hmm. it has happened. Uh how about I can't remember. I was gonna say something cool. Just imagine something bizarre. Would that happen in a normal video game? No, but it could happen in bootlegs. Yeah. Yeah, Darkman does have the vertical section where the platforms can go out of sync and you just can't progress. Yeah, like, the but it's a rare occurrence, you know? It's in one exact location in that game. And... Having it happen exactly once, you know, is almost a forgivable offense. It, uh, it's at least a little bit more understandable. Why is Justin showing me an Evangelion model camera? What the crap? Capitalist is on the boss, but it's out of bullets. Uh... <laughs> Wait, how do you fight the boss if you don't have no bullets? Go grab the... Oh, or take a... Oh, that's how you get a bullet. Uh. Yeah. Chat, that is exactly why I was confused. I do not know why that professional camera was Evangelion. Ooh, beautiful sounds. No, I... I... Trezdan, you led me to believe the sounds were going to be worse than they are. They're completely acceptable by my standards. You have no standard. I have a few. I have a standard. <laughs> I don't know how I get away with this stuff. <laughs> Same. Well, yep. no, we've had this game before. It's fine. Honestly, these are the ki kinds of sounds that you would expect if you accidentally bumped your Nintendo. Oh, Justin found even more Evangelion cameras, and I'm just... All three... <laughs> Apparently, all three of the robots have their own cameras, so good job, robots. I'm trying to pay attention to the match, Justin! <laughs> Actually, we only have 10 minutes left, and it's been a long weekend for Kuso Grande, so forgive me. We've got Logstar on stage two with it, three lives left. I'm hoping this is the drive that sees some progress because we are running out of time. Mm. Uh, this is the time, rather than be fast and reckless, to just carefully try to plunk out some progress. The Especially timer the at the bottom of the screen is super generous. You, yeah, I, I don't think anybody is gonna run out of time in game. So just taking it a little bit slower, uh, not taking damage, making sure you get to the first boss without dying, and then kill the boss without dying. That is really what's needed. You need to have as many lives as possible when you're attempting the second stage. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, Big Mike, the... On, the other, on the other yeah. hand, is actually yeah. doing it. The most direct way to win a uh, race is to not die. <laughs> Yeah, they taught me that in middle school, you know? 
I mean, that's not always true. I've, I've seen some games where you, you're in a race and the fastest way to win the race is to yeet your corpse across the finish line. Oh, like Road Rash. Yeah, that happens. Uh, yeah, in the video game Road Rash, which I'm working on doing the speed runs of, uh, yeah, you can finish by crashing your motorcycle and just flying across like flying through the air hundreds of yards you can even just slide across the finish line it counts your bike doesn't have to make it but only you have to make it can i just say i appreciate the heck out of the clip that i saw of you trying to throw yourself into the ocean and missing it still killed me just fyi i was still dead it's just that yeah it rejected my body <laughs> took my soul rejected the body nah. Welcome to standard dating relationship. <laughs> oh, kiss around to everybody. Do That's... you date succubi or something? I <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is straight out of NES too. RoboCup 2 as well the the platforms that when you jump on they go down except they're not nearly as fast i would say these are better moving platforms than robocop 2. yeah that's that is the unfortunate truth isn't it yeah so logstar thought that was a platform that wasn't a platform <laughs> and that's a game over yeah welcome Ouch. to this game like Honestly, I think right now it's between Big Mike and Logstar, though. Dragon Lord Carter is onto the boss and has a decent amount of health. You just got to make sure you don't run out of bullets. I think that's going to be fine here. Like, this yeah. boss is a bullet sponge. It's awful. Carter is taking a very conservative approach here. But it might pay off because we're in that range now where you start thinking, hey, if I have a good attempt, it's going to be my last one. Yep. I think that that is a wise way to take it. Don't rush. Be calm. Just try to make these stupid jumps. Keep calm in Robocop. <laughs> we don't need any more of those flags. We don't need any. Don't. That meme has been dead for like a decade now. No, we definitely don't need any more of, of that as a meme, but... No! Oh, it might get mind. squished! Ha, ha I love the googly eyes when you get squished in this game. It's so cute. Might be the end for Mike. I, I think he's got one more shot. Yeah, there's time. Heck, depending on how fast this attempt goes, could have two shots. Live, laugh, Robocop? We don't need any more of that meme either. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Find some new material. Carter backflips into a pit. That's it for Carter. Oh no. Live free, die Robocop. Ooh, I like that one. Die Robocop. No thoughts, head Robocop. No, that doesn't even work. It's a good day to Robocop. No rules get Robocop, I like it. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of what was the last tournament was about, especially whenever Corndan showed up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robocop, just do it? No, I don't like that one. No. Uh, how... I... No. All Robocops are... Wait, no. Um... Dan, I do not Robo want to I see more it. Robocop. No. Like, why, how do you... You only hear what you want to hear, Corn Dan. I think that's true of a lot of us. Uh... <laughs> yeah, to be fair. Look, okay. Uh, the, here's the reason I dislike most Robocop games. In that visually they end up tending to be extremely boring. Uh because Robocop moves slow in front of a bland setting and the music is bland and everything is bland. Robocop is like the blandest 
genre of video game out there. And that's what, what so like this bootleg is probably my favorite RoboCop game because it's the opposite of bland. It is amazing. Look, you, you say RoboCop is boring, and yet you have the most boring game in the world right there on the table, Mr. Driller. I've never played it. It's it's all about boring. Oh my gosh. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Do you truly? Yes! Tristan, don't question me! Don't question my ability to get it! It was more in the sense of, do you regret getting it? <laughs> oh. Mm. Congrats you! Yeah, congrat you! Robocop. Uh, yeah, th that's sort of like, like, Robocop 2 is a little bit more of my, I kind of like this Robocop because it's, it, it's a little bit wild for an NES game, like, because the platforming is super difficult to control. Uh, the action is fairly high paced. There's a lot of BS in the game and it, it makes me happy. I regret ever giving out Robocop 3 for Super Nintendo because that is a snooze fest. However, it's also a very painful snooze fest for the players. It is so incredibly difficult. So it's like, yeah, it, it's a good type of suffering for the players, but it is difficult to keep me interested in that game. Yeah, it's really hard to balance some games being a good race and still interesting to watch because a lot of the things that I think would be really funny to put in a Cusa Grande would also make the race extremely unfair. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I'm not too worried about uh, if some of the games are going to be uh, a little less on the interesting side. There are a lot of not interesting bad video games out there, and every once in a while they're going to show up. It's just that usually, you know, we tend to have that be more the exception than the rule because there's a lot of outstanding crap for Cusa Grande. Yeah, Okami of Games is stating that they left for two minutes and now everybody's on level two. That is Robocop for, I mean, a Korean Robocop, Korean bootleg Robocop for ya. Big Mike, <laughs> how are you able to control literally anything? like this it I... is possible to traverse those moving platforms what i don't think the racers have realized is those platformers don't just go or those platforms don't just go down when they reach the bottom of their cycle they start going back up wait really yes oh my gosh amazing and also still better than robocop 2 that's like infinitely better than robocop 2. yeah i think honestly... that was a wall the last time this was in and then someone figured it out and then everyone figured it out after them i'm sorry like when you manage to do the bootleg better than the original game i know isn't it amazing yeah or at least more interesting than the original game like they improved on some of the mechanics here which is great yeah maybe the movement isn't as good but we're, we're talking about a game that was for the uh msx which scrolling on the msx was hard right uh scrolling on the msx1 was different yeah it was more difficult yeah uh, so if it shot. is a port from the msx this actually is f oh no mike oh no good so, push to yeah, the right though where it's going to be the end for practically everyone <laughs> Oh yeah, we've got 20 seconds left. We can see what Logstar Go does in these last few seconds, but we are at that point in the match where it's time to start saying goodbye to the music and start saying hello to the other music. <laughs> Apparently three people made it to the wall that is that double platform. Capitalist, unfortunately, didn't make it there. The other three players did. So the big question is, who got more horizontal progress in that area? It looks like Kate already has an idea of that. Probably uh -huh. going by when they got there first more than anything. At least that's how I would call it, but I'm not the ref. 
It's true. Uh, in general, if nothing specific is given, we judge based off of the amount of progress made to the end of the level. And yes, we have done measurements based off of pixels in the past. But that said, Kate is congratulating Logstar Go for taking the victory today. That was Robocop. It's, yeah. Kind of. It was supposedly Robocop. Rumor has it we just saw a Robocop game on Kuso Grande. <laughs> Hello there, Logstar Go, and congratulations on your victory. Hello. Thank you. Woo! Oh, you, you got to survive possibly my favorite Robocop game out there. Yeah. Uh, that might be the word. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, favorite is definitely a term for that. It is not very good. It's not yeah, good. I mean, yeah, I mean, the biggest problem is the momentum. That's the biggest thing far and away. Yeah, like, it's difficult for players to see it, but uh, you definitely have to, like, work up your speed when doing the platforming, even though it looks a lot more like... Uh, what Plantinus, Lost in Plantinus, you know, uh, sort of tile-based movement rather than uh, momentum. But there is momentum in the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, it also, it also takes a while for you to stop. But yep. the thing is, you don't mind that after a while. You just mind just the momentum. Like in, in mine, there was the one part I was stuck on for a while, just falling platform, regular platform, falling platform. And it's like... Yeah, you can so easily lose momentum on that first falling platform. And if you jump too early, on the other hand, you get squished. By the way, the the platforms that go down in the second level, if you stay on them, they go back up. <laughs> okay, I'm... I'm uh. <laughs> I just love... It. Drop in, drop in the big pieces of advice. It's a bootleg. It follows no rules. It makes its own rules. You know. Um, just a, just a little thing. Uh, the part that I got to several times. Is that how you're supposed to do that part? Uh, uh, which part? Just where I ended with the one falling platform that was way higher than the first. I thought that might have been something where you needed the boost to do it, but no. Just wait yeah, on the yeah. first platform and it'll go back up. Yeah, um, if you it, when you stomp on the platform, it goes down, and most people assume that it's just going to keep going down. Uh, if you keep jumping up and down on it, it goes down and then starts going back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, video games, am I right? Hey everybody, welcome to video games. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, Logstar, go. What about the speed power-up? What were your thoughts about that? It, it, with how slow you usually go at times, at times, you want the too fast. Just, even if just for a change of pace, you want the too fast. That's of fair course, enough. at the end, you know, there were several times where I was like, no, I'm just going to wait the 20 seconds. I'm just waiting the 20 seconds on this one. <laughs> yeah, I I love how wild that is. The shocking thing to me was that the big mic was actually able to do platforming with that power up. Like, uh, you you'd get it halfway through the first stage and then make it to the end with it, and it just shocked me. It absolutely blew me away that he was able to control it as well as he did. Oh yeah, I got pretty good at doing that in stage one, but stage two it was time just, you know, just just wait it out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, seriously, this was a lot of fun. So it looks like, just to confirm everybody, Logstar Go took first, Dragon Lord Carter second, which means unfortunately Big Mike and Capitalist are eliminated. It's sad, but you know, that is sort of what happens. Uh, but for those who are enjoying Cuso Grande, we'll see about when the next matches are. It looks like because license -a -thon is happening next weekend, we won't be doing Cuso Grande. I'll probably do a little stream myself, 
I'm streaming Tuesday for sure. I'll let people know if there's a stream uh, earlier in the week, later on in the week. Uh, Logstar Go, do you have anything that you need to plug? Or that yeah, you'd like doing, to? Uh, just doing some normal streaming. Way too much Splunky 2. Still need a, still need some co-op partners, though. Looking at my, looking at my uh, last time, because I was playing with Beginner, I kind of feel bad because I realized for, for the um, successful Tiamat run, I sounded like I was talking to a dog that kept peeing on the carpet. Oh no! Like, no, 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 it's like, oh my god, I sound, oh my god, I'm being on the other side of that. I am such a jerk right now. <laughs> other than that, uh, just some random shortcuts. I'm going to do I'm going to do Hylix, and uh, of course, whenever Fuzzy's around, um, the Demon Rush. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah, he, he already quote unquote likes Alberto. And Wait, who fuzzy, is this? Uh, fuzzy, yeah. But yeah, he okay. quote, un, quote unquote, you know the quote unquote. But uh, also dead silence when he learned that that it was Cherry Venus. It's like, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> is that just twitch.tv fuzzy? Uh, no, that's Fuzzy Wordsmith. <laughs> Fuzzy Wordsmith, and, okay. And, and of course, you know, I'm, you know, logs are underscore, underscore go, so that's that. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much. We're going to raid ESA because they are currently playing Super Mario 64 FPS, uh, and they're at the final Bowser, so let's go raid them. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to send you ASAP... Uh, if you have a good raid message, you can go ahead and do that, but just go and watch if you want. Uh, okay, oh, here we go. See, uh, Submit to BBG. BBG uh, submissions close in a week. Yeah, that's right, BBG. Submit or don't, you're not in. Uh, please do submit. We want more, 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 more. Okay, watch out for those. I think that is a good raid message. Do watch out for those. Uh, oh, he just beat the game, go. Okay, bye Logstar, bye Tristan. Bye. See ya.